welcome to my channel Gauri's Three C's. It's almost summer, almost um, Father's Day around the corner. Father's Day is always the third Sunday of June. So I decided why not make some father, some more Father's Day cards. If you've not seen my other video on a Father's Day shirt card, I'll link that up um, on the card above and do, do take a look. Today I decided to make some Father's Day shirt and tie card, something similar to this. Of course, we'll be using different colors and patterns today. Um, but they'll be very similar. So these cards have just a shirt and a tie on the top and a simple Father's Happy Father's Day stamp on the inside. So let's go ahead and get started with these. To start off, you need a card base, which is, um, as, as always, a four and a quarter by 11, scored in the middle at five and a half and folded down, creased down the line. Since this is a red card base, and a black stamped image would not show in or anything that you want to write down would not show in. I put in a panel that measures four by five and a quarter and then pasted that in. That's where we'll be stamping our image in. We need a piece of four by four, any pattern that is appropriate for a tie. So this is a perfect square, four by four. And also another piece with a shirt. Now that's going to be slightly longer than your card and you'll see why. Um, this is this pattern for instance is something that is not a double-sided um, pattern it is a single-sided one and that's the reason why it's slightly longer this measures four by um, five and seven eighths the reason why it's five and seven eighths you'll just see in a minute well let's go ahead, go ahead and get started the first thing that I have done on this four mm, five and seven eighths side is scored twice once at five and eight, five eighths again at one and a quarter so maybe i'm not sure if you're able to see the score lines clearly here maybe you can see the score lines on the back side the reason why i have these two scores is when i fold down the collar like, like for example on this one when i fold down the collar i don't want the white to show up i want the pattern to show up so for that i have an additional five eighth inch that i can tack down and fold back so you'll see that uh, I am going to uh, fold along this first code line and paste that down. So I'm going to use my score tape to do that. Putting that along this edge. Get that backing off and fold that down. Now this is five inch, inch shorter than where we started off and then I have one more scored line where I'm going to do the next step of cutting an inch on both sides. I'm going to use my steel ruler and probably this side will show up better. So using the mark, marks on the other side. Lining it up on my mat. And I need to make a small cut an inch on this side and an inch on this side as well. You could of course use your um, just a pair of scissors to do this do this step. Now what's that going to what that is going to let me do is it's going to let me fold this down but I also need to make sure that I'm right in the center so I'm lining it up between my 8 inch mark and my 12 inch mark this is a 4 inch wide strip so I'm um, lining it up that way and then on this 10 inch mark which is right in the middle I can make sure that I don't go off from that center keep my steel ruler here and then bring this point down to this line that way I know exactly I'm in the center and fold that down to make the collar on one side once you have that point then on the other side you can you can just um, shift the paper around a little bit move the paper around a little bit and wiggle it in place right and then you can press that down so there you see um, the shirt is almost formed right now so now we can put the shirt on one side and move on to making the tie. Uh, if you don't want a score line to show up right in the middle of your tie, what you could do is you can, of course, if you want this side to show up as your tie, you need that face down. You could line the 
points from this point at this point on your inch marking here I'm, I'm putting that along the 10 inch side 10 inch mark and you need to make something like an airplane fold some you know all of us probably are familiar with this airplane fold um, even if you go a little bit off and it's not exactly on point it's not that big a deal you'll see when as we go if it just turns out to be a little bit wonky there's a way to fix it all right increase these folds down well and then once you have these creased down turn this around This is the bottom of the tie. So, sorry. This is the bottom of the tie. So you need to bring this about an inch and a quarter down. So this this portion is an inch. I'm taking that a little bit up. So that that's roughly about an inch and a quarter over here. And that point, I'm bringing it down. You could use um, a scoring tool or a ruler to just get that line to want to fold on its own. So that's just a quick score there and to fold that down that's one fold and then you fold it halfway back in and then again back up hoping you're able to see this I also like to tuck this back portion onto the back side that's going to just stay put over there to the back side. Now the next step is to make the shape of the tie. This is obviously a little bit wider for a tie. So the next step is to this this portion of the top is going to become lumpy as you go depending on the thickness of your paper. It is going to be more it's going to take a little bit more muscle power to wiggle that down in place mine is a very light scrapbooking weight paper so mine shouldn't be that tough so you need to get this point to the to the center line and then press this down really well and do that on the other side as well now this is the point at which if it turns out to be a little bit wonky here's what you could do now for example if i try and place this exactly over here that obviously is a little bit wonky so what you could do is to make a bit of a, you know one over the other and overlap so the straights straightens out so if you see over here that's more or less straight if you look at look at it from the other side that will more or less look straight and like a tie so that was my you know <laughs> quick fix for wonky and uh, not not exactly straight um, tie that you fold down let's fix this a little bit on the top okay next step we'll bring that shirt back in we need to fix this tie and and if there are any imperfections at the top of the tie that's all going to get covered by the collar that will come down so you know you don't have to worry too much but one thing that i do like to do is to glue this portion down um, so nothing nothing sticks out and nothing comes out so just run a little bit of adhesive um, at the right places here and then adhere that tie the the areas of the tie that may stick out a little bit down and then you could use either glue dots or um, again tape glue or any any kind of glue to put this down on the um, on the card on the shirt so I'm taking three glue dots one one roughly in the middle and then one more closer to the edge so if you're able to see there's one here one here and one there and get that some uh, one thing i do need to make sure is that i i'm centering it on the card or on the shirt so i do need to make sure that i have this point uh, almost at the center get that down place that all the way in and then if there are that's where i was saying if there are any imperfections in your um, upper portion of the tie that's all going to get covered by the uh, the shirt collars 
you could also paste down the shirt collars with some glue dots or you could also use um, something like dimensionals for this all right that's the shirt and the tie ready there now it's time to mount it onto the card using my tape gun just lining it up um, so it's roughly equal on three sides of the card it's going to slip down a little bit over here because you're um, the the top of the collar is the top of the card here the the top of the collar is what is going to be an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch from the top of the card but on the other three sides it should equally line up so there you have it that's your card let's do a little bit of stamping um, bring my black dye ink and I have stamped over here a stamped image that says happy father's day king that up and center it on the card wherever you need to place it oops that's a little bit of smudged ink that I have to find a way to fix that And let's do a quick pick of fixing here. I am going to use a scrap piece of paper that I have and then cover up my smudge. These are, I just see these as opportunities to improvise. Okay, there you have it. Uh, one in red, one in blue, and one in green. But the green one, I just wanted to mention one more thing, is that I just did not have the exact same color, green colored cardstock with me. I had different variations of green, but none that was coming close to the tie color. So here's what I did. I used the same pattern paper that I used for the tie, took a piece of four and a quarter by five and a half and mounted that on plain white cardstock. So the card base is actually white. I just, to give the effect of the green background, I just have pattern paper on the back. So that's what I did with the green one. I hope you like it. If you like this video, please like, share, comment and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on my next one. Happy Father's Day.